It's story time. Okay, now this property listed for, let's see, about $120,000. Okay, well, the buyers wanted to buy it. They had their own agent. So they couldn't, they had another property and they were kind of getting help on it and they couldn't really afford it, but the seller really wanted to sell. They wanted to move on. So they happened to have, it was off the grid, so they happened to have a generator and an old truck and quite a few belongings that weren't worth a whole lot. I'd say they were worth, I don't mean to be disrespectful, but to me probably like less than $5,000. It was an old generator, it was an old truck. I mean this stuff was, you know, older stuff, kind of beat up. So, the lender would only loan, what was it, $90,000 on the property. So, in order for the seller to get their $120,000 that they felt they needed, what they did was, okay, the buyers got a loan from their bank. I think they got a down payment from uh, one of their parents, something like that. And in order for to make this deal work, the seller financed... $30,000 for personal property. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think in retrospect it's it's not really necessarily legal because it's you're selling you're pretending to sell personal property as but how do you prove that, right? You're pretending to sell personal property, but really it's part of the purchase price. Okay? So the purchase price to the seller was $120,000. Right, so, and, and what happened through that was the, um, at the day of closing, the wife springs on me that she's leaving her husband, and so that's kind of what happened. They did break up, it, it came out that day. Well, she got the money, right? There was like $30,000 in, that they got in equity that day, the day of closing, a few days later, whatever. She got that, and then the guy in the divorce, he got the note. So the $30,000 note on the personal property. Okay, so what happens... <coughs> Excuse me. What happens in a situation like this when the buyer doesn't pay? Well, you don't have... Th there's more I could have done, but it was, it was years ago and I, I didn't know what I know now, and so I'm telling you folks to try to prevent this from happening to you. It wasn't a contract for a deed, so it wasn't owner financing on the property. So there was nothing that went through the title company that had a legal description tied to that property. So in the event that the buyer stopped paying, whether it be one week or two years, there was nothing that the seller could do to go after the buyer, right? So that's kind of what happened. It turned out, it turned out good because I fight for my people. It was like six years later and, um, six, anyway, it was a few years later and they called me and I, I coached them on it, and I fought with them on it, and I worked with the title company, and I worked with people to try to help them to push this deal through. But really, in the real world, there was no way to make the buyer pay, right? Because there was no attachment to the land. Plus, it's kind of tax fraud, right? So if you're really getting, if it looks like on paper you're getting 90000 it wouldn't have mattered because you get your 250000 exclusion now. But, but in the big picture of knowing this stuff, it's kind of a tax fraudish sort of a situation because it looks like in the settlement statement you're getting ninety thousand, but really you're getting one hundred and twenty thousand, right? Okay, so then when the buyer goes to sell it, it's it's bad for the buyer too because they really paid one hundred and twenty thousand dollars for it, but it looks like on paper that they paid ninety thousand. So if they go to sell it like a few years down the road, you know, say property prices increase and they sell it for one hundred fifty thousand. Well, really, they bought it for 120, and they sold it for 150, so they have 30,000 dollars that's a taxable gain, right? Well, no, they actually paid 90, and they're taxed at the difference between 150 and 90. Well, 60,000 dollars is a lot bigger tax base. So there's a lot of things that can go wrong, so don't, just don't ever, ever do this. It's better to see the seller thought they didn't want to do a second, right? Well, the lender didn't think that the property was worth more than ninety thousand, so they were only willing to loan the ninety thousand on it, and I think they put like twenty thousand dollars down. So it, it just it just didn't work out right. But what should have happened was the lender would have been a first on it, right? So they borrowed the money from their parents, and whatever deal they had with their parents, that was whatever. I mean, if that was yet another loan, that would have been even scary. 
So say the parents give a gift and that's a down and the lender loans on the property. What you want to do in a situation like that is get a second mortgage, right, or a contract for deed. So the seller is going to carry a note for $30,000 on the property. A lot of sellers are scared of that because on a second, if there's a foreclosure, then they don't get, they feel like they don't get their money. They feel like whatever's left, the lender will get their money. But if, there, if it does go to foreclosure, what happens, to the best of my knowledge, is that the property sells for whatever they can get for it, and the lender gets paid off, and the rest goes to the buyer, right? So this property was heading towards foreclosure, just as your example here. And so what happens when this property is, well, say it's worth 140000 now, and it goes to foreclosure, and the buyers owe like 80000 well, you know, because they didn't pay much down in the beginning. So say the buyers owe 80000 they sell it for 150. The buyer gets all that money in the difference. They have to pay off their lender in this foreclosure, but the buyer gets the extra money. And they don't owe anything to the other people because it was on personal property. Had the other people had a second mortgage, you know, like a note on it, then they would have got paid off second. So the mortgage, um, whatever money they get, the lender gets paid off first, and then the seller would get paid off second. That's a lot more protection than any other deal. You have to make sure that the legal description is on there and that you actually have a loan against the land and never get into a situation like that because it's uh, tricky on so many levels. Okay, SavvyBroker.com. Have a great day.